Hello and what's up everybody, welcome to all my viewers from around the world. The sun is hiding and the magpie is casting once again. Coming to you with a 1v1 live game, the map today is going to be Falmionville Approach. Spawning in the north, we have the Vermac forces of Tofu. While spawning in the south, we have the USA forces of Captain S. Price. Uh, so, uh, yep, yeah, uh, cast a game on this map just earlier today, which was uh, again, between Overcommand and the UK forces. Mixing it up a bit today, bringing in some uh, US forces and, uh, of course, the Vermac. Um, I think uh, at the moment I would say probably Vermac, the most balanced team in the game. It seems very strong, has a very comprehensive and capable toolkit. Able to fight in a variety of styles and deal with all manner of situations, as well as creating a lot of headaches for Europe for, for, for their opponents. Uh, so, uh, Tofu here, locking and loading with no bulletins, which um, is a controversial choice. And uh, he's bringing the Fortified Armor Doctrine, one we don't see very often, but one which I quite like. Um, I think it's not the best of the Elephant Commander. I prefer the other one, who gets the Regal and the Regal Half Track mines. Uh, but this guy does get Panzer Tactician, very worthwhile ability, Recon Overflight, never underestimate it. Hull down, um, if you remember to use it, and if you remember that it's not just Pioneers but Grenadiers who can hull your stuff down, it's an incredibly useful ability. The Command Tank at 9, com uh, nine Command Points, which is just a really good thing to call in, and of course the Elephant Tank Destroyer at 14, which um, you can take a view on the Elephant Tank Destroyer, some people love it, some people hate it. And uh, he's also got the uh, Assault Grenadiers and the uh, Close Air Support Doctrine, who we're more familiar with. Captain S. Price rocking out with the Airborne Company, the Armour Company, and the Infantry Company. Controversially not packing the Elite Rifleman Commander, so um, we might actually get to see another American Commander for once. Woohoo! Yeah! Um, but of course that means he'll never have access to Easy 8s, so um, we'll see how that goes. Upcoming patch coming out, I think, tomorrow? Not sure about that, but I think it's tomorrow. Um, which is going to considerably buff uh, both the regular Sherman and the Easy 8. So, uh... Going up to one, two, three, four, five, six rear echelon squads is Captain S. Price. Never seen anything like this before, not gonna lie. Not quite sure what he's playing at, but I'm sure he'll make it clear very soon. Uh, soon. And uh, let's see, uh, da, 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 some grenadiers just gonna flank on in here. I mean, with six squads out, he's actually got a decent presence across the map, which is, you know, fair enough. How much, uh, how much is a squad of rear echelon troops these days, anyway? 160. So yeah, that's how come you can spam them like that. Um, Interesting, very interesting. And meanwhile, uh, Tofu is going for the uh, Quad Grenadier Squad uh, opener. Bup, 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 four Grenadier Squads. So much for combined, ar combined arms approach. Um, wow, these Grenadiers are really able to hand it to the rear echelon troops. Rear echelon troops are okay, but not all that in a fight. In fact, you know what? They're basically not anything in a fight. Um, you can't even buy them flamethrowers. So until you get those BARs, they're a pretty soggy squad. And... Uh, Grenadiers, uh, the forces of Tofu mostly focused on the west portion of the map. Getting in some good positions, using cover, grabbing points, taking names, playing some b-ball outside of the school, being all cool, up in the hood, like they should. And, uh, should be able to crack a leg through these... Uh, there we go, yeah, forcing the fullback from uh, those, uh, re those rear echelon troops. Ambulance, the uh, three-quarter ton ambulance, WC-54, going to be coming on out. And a mortar squad, the choice for Tofu. So uh, that's pretty cool. I mean, the, the ambulance is a good choice. That's going to allow him to heal and reinforce. And uh, the mortar, also a pretty good choice. Able to probably savage some rear echelon troops. And maybe if it gets a hit on the mortar, I mean, sorry, it gets a hit on the ambulance. I mean, a mortar's probably got enough damage to take care of that. One, one would imagine. I don't know, probably not in one hit, but yeah. Anyway. Grenadiers just doing work against these rear echelon troops. I can't see how uh, I can't see how uh, Captain Mass Price is ever going to take a fight here. I mean, obviously he's not trying to. He's just trying to skirt around, play for time, play for play, play for territory, grab points with a superior number of units. But you know, what? he doesn't even really have a superior number of units. What he has now is five five units of rear echelon troops against four of Grenadiers and a mortar. I mean, and the pioneers aren't useless in a fight, so there's them too. BAR upgrade has been uh, uh, researched, and so weapon racks now available. Um, so we've got uh, two BARs on uh, on each of two separate rear echelon troop squads, um, being the early munition spending there for Captain S. Price, as we're coming up to the four and a half, five minute mark. So this is pretty early weapon racks. We'll see if the BARs are able to uh, deliver the goods and do some damage. Um, i quite like to see. And uh, the GR-34 mortar. Oh my goodness, scoring a cracking first shot. Three kills and half a level of veterancy on the very first round. And uh, this is a unit which, um, again, tomorrow, the 10th, I believe the patch comes out, is due for a nerf. Going to have quite a considerable rate of fire nerf. 
probably dropping it to about 60% of its present rate of fire, which when you compare it to the Soviet mortar and the Lig and the pack howitzer and the other indirect fire options for the other races, seems totally fair. The GR34 at the moment is like the most steroidal um, indirect fire piece in the game. It is devastating. Its rate of fire is obscene. So uh, I think bringing it in line with the other indirect fire pieces is um, absolutely fine and a good move on Relic's behalf. Controversially though, uh, it does just mean that people are going to be less inclined to build these. The MG32 sorry, the MG also is going to be nerfed in this patch. So um, with, the, with the mortar team and the heavy machine gun team both receiving nerfs, I think we're just going to see more grenadiers. And I don't think that's, you know, we already see enough grenadier spam. You know, four squads off the bat. So I... Oh, it's a good rifle grenade there. So I'm not sure what Relic's reasoning there is. Uh, as the fight in the middle pretty much comprehensively taken by the Axis forces. Now, this squad of uh, rear echelon Steady troops could be annoying if it was just pushing up, chewing up some more territory. Um, it's done good work, though, securing the munitions and a fuel point there on the on the right flank in the east of the map. Uh, I can hear that quarter-ton ambulance just repositioning. Fuel now, uh, Tofu floating uh, 72. Has he gone to battle phase 2? Not quite yet, so uh, maybe we'll see that. Maybe we won't. Maybe he'll make a commander choice that will... Uh, give us a little more information about his plans for that fuel spending. Uh, neither player having chosen a commander, and I, I really respect that. I think that's um, I think that's such a wise, wise maneuver. A wise, it's not even a maneuver, it's a, it's a choice. Wise maneuver. That's some commentary, Magpie, that is some commentary. How do you look yourself in the mirror? Um, quite easily, as it turns out. Um, anyway. So, uh, squad of grenadiers here on the right flank. Uh, they're gonna they're gonna look to grab this fuel point, delay the tacking of the U.S. forces. A light response here of some five rear echelon troops with the BAR. BAR now, I believe, is quite a potent uh, quite a potent choice actually, because it's been buffed a couple of times. And I believe it's tomorrow uh, on the tenth of the patch. I believe its damage at mid and long is actually going to be increased. Um, so it'll start feeling less like an SMG and more like um, an assault rifle, which I think is appropriate. Um, I'm not convinced about the changes to the PPSHs. I think that they should feel like S SMGs on account of the fact that they are SMGs. Um, are because you see the uh, PPSH machine guns of the Russians also going to be in for a buff. As we've got a move out here from Captain S. Price pushing mid with three squads of rear echelon troops, all equipped with VARs, and this is causing the mortar team and the grenadiers to have to displace. The grenadiers are going to get into cover. We've got another squad just here behind the light cover. And we'll see if they're going to be able to hold this position. The mortar team may be able to just uh, deploy here and get a couple of shots in. Grenadiers being microed out the building, and they need to micro back in before these rear echelon troops take the building, but that is not going to be the option. Tofu decides to move back to the cover here, but that's going to expose this mortar squad to fire from the building as an HMG-42 team getting set up here. And that should help turn this fight considerably. Uh, a squad of rear echelon troops in a building, not going to be enough. He needs to push forward with a couple more. If I were him... Let's see, uh, I don't know actually, that MG42 makes life really difficult, I mean he's really got to flank all the way around here, hop the fence and cover it from this angle, but uh, that's going to be pretty difficult to achieve. The Grenadiers now with LMG42s and another squad beginning to push back and the uh, rear echelon troops are going to have to get up there, Get sorry get out of there. Captain S Price now up to seven squads of rear echelon troops, has a captain with the two bazookas, has a steward just coming to the front, so we'll see if that's going to do any good. Uh, he's now up to 33 fuel. I'm imagining the next thing he's going to do is get the major out and uh, go for it. Go for it from there. Victory point wise, I've got a 60 point lead here for the Axis forces. Nothing too much to sweat about. No particular swings or leads being taken. Right now, U.S. forces got two of the three victory points as this battle in the mid continues. Kind of a long and sprawling skirmish here. A nice, nice long fight. Now let's see if the Stuart can make a difference. It's going to come in. Oh, he's in fausting range. He needs to get back. That's going to be a, that's going to be a quick cast. Luckily, I don't think this is going to... Oh, it does break the engine. That is unlucky, I think, for a full health uh, Stuart in the front armor to get engine broken. I don't know. Maybe that's not unlucky. It is only a light tank after all. And uh, let me just take a quick break from the action to see how much does a Stuart cost these days. I think it's... Yeah, it is 70 fuel and 240 on the manpower. So reasonable investment. Pack gun coming out here. So uh, the anti-tank is now here and just on time for the Vermac player Tofu. Uh, as the rear echelon troops uh, change their focus, just this blob of rear echelon ages, just pushing, pushing. But the MG42 is in a great position, and that is going to make life difficult. Oh, look at the suppression. Oh, and the mortar. And you've got to say, combined arms there, pretty effective against the unit spam and blobbing of the US player. Now, I'm not saying, you know, that's necessarily his fault, and I know that the US, particularly in the early game, early mid game, doesn't have a lot of unit versatility, not a lot of unit choices that they can bring to the field. And uh, this Stuart's finally going to displace the MG. That's going to force the MG out. Wow, if it doesn't kill the MG, that is a good hit right there. 
Actually, though, the pack gun's in position. Strikes in one round. Might get a second. It's not going to get a second. Okay, that's fair. And, uh, of course, I suppose the advantage of having swarms of rear echelon troops is, of course, that they can just they can all repair your vehicles, can't they? So that's pretty cool. He's still going to use the vehicle crew repair, and they do repair very quickly to the vehicle crews, so that's that's also a good choice. Fair enough. Look at that repair rate. Beautiful. Um... Squad of Pioneers, well I say a squad of Pioneers, Solo Pioneer up here, Hans Solo. That actually works because Hans is a German name, you see. Uh, going to push up uh, in the north. Um, now where's the MG42 in all this? Still being reinforced now, it's coming to the front now, but this is a big blob of BAR echelons and they know that that MG42 isn't in position yet. It's running to the front now, but as soon as it gets spotted, how is the engine still broken? What the? What the? Oh, sorry, I missed some action with the Stuart there. Oh, that's crucial because it means that this MG42 is, is there's, there's no answer for it. And these guys are all in the arc. You've got to imagine the mortar. Oh no, the mortar's threatened. In fact, the mortar's probably going to die. That many BARs are that close. Oh, oh, oh. oh he might just no, nope, no, nope, gets gunned down by the rear echelon guys in this building. There's damn ramps, and uh, the uh, Stuart pretty much repaired now. Needs to get these guys out of there. They're not achieving much by being suppressed by the MG42 in that position. And uh, the Stuart ready to rock once again, nearly up to one star veterancy, so uh, that's pretty cool. Let's go and check on the fuel spending for the Vermac player. He has still not escalated to Battle Phase 2, so not quite sure in actually what he's saving his fuel for just now. We'll have to keep an eye on that. Meanwhile, the American player has uh, 100 fuel, which I believe allows him to purchase the... Ma oh, sorry, 120 for the Major. My bad. So clearly saving for that. Looking to get Shermans and heavy armor. Uh, a motor carriage would do a real number on this army, actually. Oh, wow. This is a Stuart, which is in a dubious position. Just want to get out of there. These two pack guns will just be keen to take shots into this guy. Positioning him in an ambitiously far forward position. I'm not sure if I like this unsupported. Squad of rear echelon troops in the north with backup. Gonna engage these Grenadiers. That should be a fight that they can take if they just push forwards. No LMG 42 on that Grenadier squad. Tofu uh, only floating around 60 munitions. Um, munition income actually actually far superior for Captain S. Price because he's managed to actually can maintain control pretty much the whole game with this munitions point. And for large swathes of the game has had this one. And when he when he takes this one in just a moment, we'll see his munitions spike up considerably. And that's going to allow him, I would have thought, to buy uh, perhaps more bazookas or even um, more BARs for his uh, rear echelon squads, which he's up to eight of now. Like, um, again. And if we look at his unit cap, I mean, he's on 51 supply with a captain and a steward and an ambulance on top of eight other infantry squads. I mean, Soviets eat your heart out, man. This is how to do proper, proper, like, waves of infantry and spamming, uh, spamming infantry rushes. Loving it. Loving the style here from Captain S. Price. Clearly a commander who's um, used to using the style. I haven't seen him lose many of these rare echelon squads, and this is a really interesting window on a style of uh, US, which I just... Honestly, I've just never really seen before. Maybe a lot of people use it. No idea. But it seems pretty cool. And I'm, what I'm most surprised at is the fact that he's actually making it happen, you know? He's actually making it work. Uh, if we look at the veterancy on the German forces, not as much as you might think. Um, which means that they really haven't killed that much, or if they have, it's only been these cheap, you know, rear echelon troops who are not that great. The American forces now being bolstered by another rear echelon troop squad and a pack howitzer. So the pack howitzer is going to provide some much needed... Uh, Indirect fire, it's got a good range on it, it's got some good accuracy, it can suppress, it can counter the mortar, it can counter the packs, it can counter the machine gun. So a good choice there from Captain S. Price. And uh, the German player, a little bit beleaguered now. If we look at the map, he's a little bit besieged. And there's enough rear echelon troops that he... Oh, wow, I think the Stuart... Oh, sorry, missed it. The Stuart went down to these two packs, position well. The uh, ambulance gets spiked as well. So just as I say Captain S. Price is doing well, he loses all his fuel investments here in the middle of the map. Well, nearly all of them. The captain, I suppose, is a fuel investment. And uh, that is a heavy loss for the American player. Though not as heavy as you might think. He no longer needs that Stuart to counter the MG when he has the pack howitzer. So here's the pack howitzer coming out just now. But yeah, if we look at the map, not a lot of uh, not a lot of control for the American player for the Vermont player. He's gonna need to he's gonna need to try and spread out a little bit. And he is grabbing a munition point, grabbing some uh, victory point to the north of the map. Pack howitzer taking some shots into mid forces the MG team back. Pretty accurate as the uh, as the pack sir. Yeah. Good range as well. Let's take a look at its veterancy abilities just as we uh, frame the scu scuffle that's going down here. So it gets uh, white phosphorus barrage at vet one, and then it gets high explosive AT rounds at vet two. That sounds pretty lame to be honest. Uh, and 
Uh, experience can improve firing range and weapon ready time. So it's all about the VET 3, really. I mean, the White Phosphorus Barrage is undoubtedly going to be very useful. That's cool. Not sure about having an anti-tank round on an indirect fire piece. The reason I say that is because I uh, play as Overcommand quite a lot, and I get the uh, hollow charge rounds on the light gun, and I've got to say they're pretty, pretty limp. They're not that potent. I don't really, I'm not a fan. Um, and so, wow, yeah, really bunched up. Taking control of this area is really crucial, I think, for the American forces, because this prevents a decent deployment of an MG and a mortar. If the MG and the mortar are in this hood, things get real, really fast for the Americans, but when they're just sat back here defending the, the doorstep of the base, which they are, I mean, yeah, that's... And they're doing a good job of it. Yeah, you can deal with that with the Ameri for the Americans because you're holding so much ground. It's fine to just keep trading and keeping those units in place. And meanwhile, you're up to 200 fuel. You're attacking like a moth, I presume. Has he got the major? He's not got the major yet. Ah, what do I not understand? Anyway, both both uh, both players have chosen a commander, so uh, let's review that quick time. We've got a uh, fortified armor doctrine is the choice. Fantastic, good. I uh, kind of went over this at the beginning of the game, but this is going to give him access to the elephant in the very late game and the command tank quite soon. So that's clearly where his fuel is going to go. Captain S. Price going for the armor company, who, uh, uh, sorry, just trying to frame the action here. The armor company who gets uh, assault engineers, the elite vehicle crew upgrade. Um, I think those two will basically just both be moot units at this point. That's kind of two blank abilities at this stage in the game. The M10 Wolverine tank destroyer, which is a useful and sturdy tank destroyer. Um, I quite like it. The bulldozer Sherman, which is um, quite an interesting take on the Sherman tank. And uh, we'll see if that's what he's going to buy. And finally, the 240mm two howitzer barrage, which is like, that's some big boom boom going on right there. Uh, as, uh, as one of my friends would say, it's not just the boom boom, it's the boom 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 boom. So, uh, yeah, pretty good stuff. MG42 firing from mid here, going to suppress another blob of rear echelon troops. There's another blob moving to the south here, which if he's joining on the spot with his micro, you can focus these guys and catch them as well. But, no, oh, it looks like they're going to run back through the arc. As the pack howitzer starts to uh, lock down on this MG, going to force it to move. But not before it gets them suppressed. Meanwhile, a scuffle in the south as uh, two squads of no, a squad of MG, a squad of grenadiers, and an MG42 taking on two squads of uh, rear echelon troops. My goodness, Captain S. Price is just really good at microing large amounts of infantry. I haven't seen him drop a squad for some time. Like, you know, he's just consistently retreating and and microing all of these squads across the map. It's good to see. It's nice stuff. As uh, as Tofu, likewise, you know, he's doing his best to. Um, doing his best to, to keep back this chaotic horde and it is to his credit that in the face of this micro he's um, able to actually maintain control over decent amounts of the map there is absolute chaos though if you look at the mini map uh just the american forces holding the center as the german forces kind of uh, parried to each side of them we've got a command tank there we go coming out for tofu so that's going to change things a little bit and we've got a, uh, a wolverine tank hunter which is pretty much going to be like a pretty perfect counter. Oh god, that pack hearts are doing work. Yeah, that's uh, that's really cool. And also the rear echelon troops. If we check it out here, I believe so. At one star veterancy, they get extra accuracy. Then at veterancy two, they get a one extra man per squad. So that's actually totally legitimate. That's really cool. And then at version three, they get uh, they get increased survivability and also weapon control. So actually, by the time you get them to two star, they're definitely a much more viable combat squad. And at three star, they actually sound quite decent. Um, I'll keep an eye on them, try and gauge their performance. It's not often you see rear echelon squads used in this sort of aggressive old role. Wow, the Wolverine already one star vet. That was fast. How did it do that? That's like it's got seven kill. Did it just run over to? I I'm really sorry, guys. I'm missing key moments of this game. Um, <laughs> no idea what happened there. It's somehow it's gotten seven kills. I guess it just ran over a load of dudes. And uh, some Panzer Grenadiers coming out, so they're going to probably grab some Shreks. And he does have the munitions for that, and that's going to it's going to be a really good counterplay to the uh, M10 Wolverine. Command tank's going to play it cautious, gets right to the back, doesn't want to expose itself. Has a massive push of American forces here. Getting suppressed by the MG a little bit, but that's going to be forced back as the captain and these rear echelons get close. And what does he have to deflect this blob? It's going right for his pack guns, and he's going to start getting them back, but they might get overrun. No, he's going to get them back in good order. And here comes the uh, command tank as another M10 Wolverine joins the field. Wow, this is constant action. There's just constant action all the way across the map. There's no 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 let-ups in the action, pretty much, like, from, like a lot of this game. Huge push of... Uh, huge blob of ages moving out and another MG has been purchased for uh, Tofu. Well this blob of ages is just 
insane. This is so many dudes. And uh, the command tank has been caught by the two Wolverines, but the pack guns have it covered, and it's going to use Pan's attack and just, just get back and keep the pressure on. I'm liking that. That is a savvy move from Tofu. Doesn't overreact. Just pops the smoke, backs his tank up a little bit, keeps hitting the infantry, uses the pack guns to parry the, uh, the M10 Wolverines, who have been forced all the way back to base here. And uh, just for a second... Oh no, I think that's going to be a squad wipe on this Grenadier. He is running for his life, but he's got to go down, surely. Oh my goodness, the man on fire. No, he gets out of there. That is unlucky for Captain Price. Should have got a squad wipe there, I feel. Never mind. Command tank's going to repair here, and I'd love to see him just hull it down or something. So if those M10s take a dive, then I'm going to get it. Um, let's see if he does use hull down. I'd really like it. He also uh, he has the munitions. He still has the munitions for the Panzerschrecks. But I think he's just happy using the Panzer Grenadiers in an anti infantry role. Which is, you know, fair enough. We're now at the point in the game where the uh, Bulldozer Sherman can be called in. 60 more manpower needed for Captain S. Price before we see one of those join. And uh, rear echelon troops just being annoying on the left flank. Let's see if he loses this squad. Come on, Captain S. Price, don't let me down now. He does lose a squad. There we go. It's like, wow, one of the first times I've seen him lose a squad this game. Which, when you look at the chaos going on in the mid, it's no wonder his attention is being um, stressed now. It's a multitasking, really being pushed. A grenade coming down, and that this could be another squad wipe. I'd be amazed if it wasn't. Yep, and that's another squad wipe. These grenadiers with the LM-42 doing work. Pack guns are pushing down the right flank, and they're going to force the M10 Wolverines even further back, which is going to allow the command tank to come forward. And I'd love to see him. He pushes it to here and holds it down in this position. That could be really strong. I really like that. It commands a big area here, and then you can flank it with a pack gun on either side. I'm thinking, like, one here maybe one here, and that really, really, really makes life hard. But here comes the Bulldozer Sherman. Let's see what it can achieve. The first shell comes flumping out, and it just misses these Grenadiers who escape by the skin of their teeth. The pack guns are going to get in position. I don't know if this one's in arc, though. I don't know about that. And uh, raving forward with the M10, he's taken a dive for this command tank. Panzer Tactician is available, and he does have the munitions, does Tofu. The uh, Bulldozer tank really, really, really just uh, just circle strafing these... Um, these uh, Oh, these pack guns down and the heavy rounds doing work. Devastating damage. It's Wolverine stricken. The command tank also on a one hit to die. He needs to get the front armor face on. That has got to be a dead command tank. Oh, even worse, it's abandoned. Now, are there any rear echelon troops nearby? Not even close. So there's no danger of that tank falling into enemy hands. He's going to focus fire it just to kill it off. It's Captain Price. The two Wolverines look to be forfeit here. I'd love to see him just take one more shot at this tank. There it is. Gets it. Whilst in mid. The Sherman perilously low. These pack guns stand to destroy the entire armored forces of the American player. The bulldozer Sherman is abandoned. One of the one of the M10 Wolverines goes down. The, uh, the Grenadiers making a beeline for the bulldozer, and they get it. But the engine's damaged as a fresh command tank comes in for the Panzer forces, and a lot of units traded there. We saw a command tank go down for uh, for for, uh, for two Wolverines and a bulldozer Sherman, and, and woefully enough for Captain S. Price, I think they're coming very unlucky in that fight. The Bulldozer Sherman looks to be salvaged, and there's nothing that this vehicle crew can do about it. The Bulldozer Sherman is going to get out. The command tank is just racing forwards. He knows his opponent doesn't have much in the way of anti-tank at this point. And with that exchange, for the first time this game, I'd say, one of the players has it, firmly has the upper hand, and that is Tofu. Now let's see how he how he can exploit it. He's got a, he's got a squad moving up in the north and another in the south, just moving down each flank of the map, grabbing gra grabbing ground whilst his opponent is trying to rearm and reinforce. Look, see all of the American players' units are right here. Look at the mini map. The Vermont player moving out in the north and the south, capitalising on this moment uh, to grab as much ground, secure as much resources, maybe even start making a push on the victory points. And um. And it's, it's on the American player, Captain S. Price, to break out of this deficit now. He is well and truly contained. And I'd say in about 30 seconds, that container is going to become a siege. As we have here, the weapon teams pushing forwards. The, the Wehrmacht force is nearly ready to, uh, to push forward. And the new battle line will be around the American base. That is assuming, of course, that he's not able to move out in this brief window he has before the weapon teams are in position. Ooh, and a bunker being constructed in mid. Oh, I like this. Oh, this is good work here from Tofu. Not often you have the spare manpower for that kind of thing. Um, but going for it anyway. And uh, the bazookas here on the uh, on the American forces are going to force the command tank back. You know what? Actually, they could rush this position. Oh, no, there's a squad of grenadiers here. With an LMG. 42, so that doesn't seem so wise. They should get in this building, maybe. Or they're just going to use the car. And an, an MG42 is the uh, is the upgrade of choice on that bunker. Again, that does make sense, but I think it's going to get focused down by bazookas well before it can do anything useful. 
Pat Carrots at the back providing good support as those Grenadiers are going to get back into the building. The GR34 mortar combined with an MG42 are doing work. Now what is this ability that's been used? I believe it's the battle cry on me. Uh, nearby infantry, even if suppressed, get a movement boost. So that's what he uses to break the suppression there. But with that ability now used, and this uh, this blob of rear echelon troops dangerously clustered, um, uh, Captain S. Price is going to be forced to pull back. And uh, that it was a, a valiant attempt at pushing mid, but contained and dealt with deftly. I have to say, when you look at the exchange of forces that occurred and the uh, and the way the fights were taken. You have to feel like Tofu was just just in control on that one. Now, let's see. On the right flank, this unit of rear echelon troops going to start taking that fuel point. Sorry, that victory point back. We lost a gun crew. The pack howitzer gets taken out, or at least the crew gets taken out. And this command tank just poking, just doing some work. And we're at the stage of the game now where at 245 fuel, if he ever gets 720 manpower, the Vermac player could call in an elephant. But at the moment, there's not even a single good target for an elephant anyway, so... Um, I mean, well, I guess the ambulance, but I mean, not a single target that justifies an elephant, so, yeah. The captain here, grievously low on men, he needs to, he's very low on health and uh, models, so he needs to pull back. And I'm not sure, at 75 fuel, what the American player can do in this situation. Now, he does have the captain, which I believe means that he can construct AT guns, yes, there we go. And here we have the M1 57mm anti-tank gun, very good anti-tank gun, got a good arc on that gun, not quite the penetration that the pack brings to the table, but that's going to allow him, uh, it'll easily keep a command tank at bay, and since that's the main issue, um, that could be really good. Now, it, it basically it comes down to whether this AT gun gets hit by mortars or, 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 a, or a rifle grenade or something, because um, Captain S. Price is running out of time now, and he needs to make something happen to take this game back. It ain't over, it ain't over by a long shot. Oh no, as the bulldozer Sherman is repaired and coming back onto the field for the German forces. Yeah, bulldozer tank is only way. Yes, I know he wasn't German, but it's still good. Um, so, oh, the mortar gets a squad wipe there. Jeez, that thing must be up to three star, and it is. And uh, this blob of ages, I mean, it's a great, it's a, I, I, I'm, I'm convinced, okay, I'm down. Captain S. Price, you have sold me on mass spamming of rear echelons, getting their weapon racks early, and making plays, and playing America this way. It's cool, I like it, I've not seen it before, but it's awesome. But... At the 27 minute mark, when you're staring down a bulldozer Sherman, a Panzer Command tank, a couple of MG42s, a three star mortars, with good support in the form of a few squads of, en of grenadiers and Panzer grenadiers, it doesn't cut, cut the mustard. You just don't have the variety of unit abilities, ranges, and, and, and kind of, you know, stone, paper, scissors matches to take down a foe which has both stone, papers, and scissors, or all three of them. Um, so, like, I just feel like when you look at the American force, it just doesn't have the balance, the poise, if you like, the potency of this German force. And the bulldozer Sherman is pretty much the ultimate counter for these blobs of rear echelons. Oh my. Ugh, just flumping in for damage. Kind of a mini Brumbar, if you like. And uh, here comes an M10, which I like. I like the M10. It's a good choice. He doesn't really want... I mean, a bulldozer doesn't really do well. The M10 is definitely the correct choice here. Uh, lacking a major cannot go for the Jackson, but if he spends his manpower predominantly on AT guns and spends his fuel on those uh, Wolverines, then uh, Captain S. Price has enough time to try for another push. He doesn't have much time though. Got 20, he's got uh, 30, 30, 31 ticks remaining in this. Is that right? That is miles off. 51 ticks. Now 50 ticks. Now 49 ticks remaining in the game. Um, so that's, uh, that's his primary concern, basically. He's, uh, he's not got long, and he's gonna have to he's gonna have to uh, figure out a way back into this game because he needs to capture a victory point. Also, uh, okay, yeah. Luckily enough, the fortified armor doctrine does not have a, a call-in artillery strike he could use here because that would be kind of horrible if he did. Just saying. And like this position is nice. I mean, how do you approach this at the moment with America? You don't, and that forces you onto the flanks. I, I'd love to see him just push the south, because there are no Vermont forces here, and he hasn't actually tried that for a while. So if Captain S. Price was to just send, I don't know, I would say three of his rear echelons and, and the Wolverine down to the south, and then put the M10 here to catch German armor transferring, I like that. I think that, that could play nicely. And uh, oh, the pack gun has been remanned. Captain S. Price, no slouch on the resource spending. Absolutely uh, making the most of uh, what he can. 
the M10 is, is taking good shots at this command tank. And the uh, Vermax armor in a bad way. The command tank about to die. And the Bulldozer Sherman with the M10 in its rear armor. Wow. Tofu needs to get on top of his uh, armor micro. Now he's reversing into the, into the enemy lines. And that is going to be a dead command tank. And that's a good start for Captain S. Price. Now if he can just take care of the Bulldozer Sherman, he's going to be in a good position. I mean, I don't know if he wants to do it now. But having taken care of that command tank is already a really good thing. The, the, the bad news, of course, is... Um, uh, Tofu has all the ma all the fuel he needs to call in another two command tanks. Should he need, he doesn't have the manpower just now, but that's the kind of thing you can save for, and it kind of you know, in, in, in it doesn't take so long. Now he might just be planning. I mean, he's beginning to stash up some manpower. We'll see if he spends it on a squad or if he does go for a vehicle. If he goes for a vehicle, I think another command tank is the right choice. Yeah, you can try and save up for the elephant, but costing 720 manpower, that's going to take you quite a while. And, I mean, Everybody, as I said before, door. it would just be a statement of, like, you know, just saying, look, I'm so far ahead, I've got an elephant, and not really a useful unit. Yeah, sure, us. it'll we kill your opponent's M10 Wolverine, remaining. you know, but that's not even that's not even that great of a prize, you know, and if you're, if you're spending an elephant, if you're building an elephant just to kill an M10, you know, that, that money could have gone better places, that's all I'm saying. Um, also, actually, does he even have the unit cap? No, it costs 25, so he can't even call that in, and he's not going for it, the command tank comes out, so... For all those reasons, and probably some of his own, Tofu deciding to make the right choice. Goes for a command tank. And all he needs to do is keep this lock up for another uh, 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 another few ticks here, to another 18 ticks. And uh, everything's going to look sweet for him. Captain here is going to get onto a command point. Actually, that's going to buy them some time. Going to buy the Americans a little bit more time. Captain S. Price making some ground here. See, that's really cool. So he's at one squad to the south, and he's managed to grab, get a command point decapped, which is immediately going to impact the game. Is it going to be enough to turn the game around? Probably not. But uh, I just think he should have been pushing south earlier, and possibly with more. Yeah. This M10's going to come up to the north. I'm going to push this command tank back. The M10's really good, and I think people are underestimating this unit a lot. I think this is really good. Every time I've had one, it's done really well. It just seems really consistent. Um, less consistent when it's being spammed by pack guns, though. Although, six rear echelon brave troopers gonna make it through and start focusing fire. They get one of the pack guns. Meanwhile, just to the south of this action, the MG42 is taking care of the rest of the infantry, and the forces are severely depleted for the American player. He's gonna get this command tank, though. It's pretty cool. Yeah, I like that. This M10 Wolverine now up to two star. But with 11 tickets left, and only capping one back. of the three We're command points. points. Sadly, I think that, that is the end of the game. Captain S. Price there, demonstrating a Capture novel build with, ah, with, with, build with interesting implications for the American playstyle, and seeing it through, and I think that that's something he's used to great success before. Uh, and I just think that in this case, Tofu going for the four riflemen to keep them back in the early game, and then backing that up with the mortar and the MGs, which were kind of answered here and there, but never actually killed or like concisely defeated. Um, and the MGs, the MG42, is, is just a fantastic choice for dealing with mass blobs of infantry. I think the pack gun was, sorry, the pack howitzer was a really sweet choice. Died once, got recruited, got back up to two stars. It's real cool. I think going for two of these would have been maybe uh, a pretty good option, actually. Um, but certainly, I think... Given the forces um, of the American pl uh, of the uh, Vermax, there was a window there where going instead of um, instead of going for the uh, Wolverine and the Bulldozer, I think there was a window there where getting a major and going for a motor carriage would have been pretty sexy. Um, I I mean again, this is just something which I can point out because I'm like you know God observer mode up here, but um, it would have been really cool. Uh, so I, I I think that that would have been cool. But then again, the M10s did really good in that game, the M10 Wolverines. So uh, yeah. Um, so, yeah, uh, I believe that that would conclude this broadcast. So uh, thank you very much for watching. This is Magpie842 signing out.